at least till the time I can see myself and then we will start and uh, yeah so you know how anesthesia is right it's easy to read easy to remember easy to solve in the exam I told you it is one of the most cool subjects that you will get for your exam so again I and I said there are so many things that can go wrong in this exam there are so many things that are new in this exam but anesthesia always remains the same so we got three questions all three from notes all three from our topics and all three that we already know so I'm pretty sure nobody would have done them wrong but just so that there is no confusion let's cover them first question correct about ASA 3 class in pre-operative evaluation of the patient I don't even need to tell you this thing we have discussed many times that ASA is American Society of Anesthesiologist ASA and this is for assessing perioperative risk it has six classes from one to six six is a brain dead patient and one is a normal we know two three four are increasing risk of medical problems and five is a surgical emergency where the patient needs surgical care otherwise they will die two three four are increasing risk of medical problems so mild control disease severe uncontrolled and severe life threatening so the question was correct about asa 3 it would be severe illness severe with life threatening would be 4 moderate would be so there is nothing called as mild and moderate that is what the recall i got there is no difference between mild and moderate uh, mild and moderate are both two okay so this is asa physical status classification few examples that we already know second question was an fio2 delivered on nasal cannula for a five-year-old child at three liters per minute so the options were 25 35 40 50 now it is asked nasal cannula and i have maintained this thing to you all the time always unless and until specified nasal cannula always means low flow nasal cannula unless and until they specify a high flow nasal cannula you will always consider it as a low flow nasal cannula is anybody alive is anybody live here today why can't i see this chat yeah if anybody is live they can just wave me hi i'll feel better so just we have discussed this so many times that nasal cannula is one of the basic oxygen delivery devices that delivers between one to six liters per minute <coughs> excuse me 1 to 6 liters per minute now what we say is that 1 liter would give us around 24% FiO2 21% is what you are breathing normal air and then every liter above that it would be adding 4% to it so 2 liter would give 28 that is 4% more then 3 liter 32 4 liter 36 5 liter 40 and 6 liter 44 all right so the option the nearest closest option was 35 because 3 liter 32 so we'll we'll take 35 as the correct answer although in a question like this although in a question like this they should have not given you such options they would have simply given you the right option that is 32 percent right because they're asking such a specific question so there is no point in they not giving the option but you know how they make these options so it's just round about that will will mark 35 percent idea is that as you increase the flow rate of oxygen so does the fio2 increase it in every oxygen delivery device you need to know what is the delivery device what are the advantages disadvantages you need to know what is the range of flow rate and the range of fio2 all right then 
comes the third question and again it's a straightforward question i think even if 30 was an option although most of the recalls that i've got they have told me 30, 25 35 40 50 but let's say 30 was an option then still you will mark 35 still you will mark 35 okay uh, question number three, a child with diaphragmatic hernia. The moment you hear diaphragmatic hernia, you should know that you do not have to do anything to increase the gastric volume and increase the risk of aspiration. Now, what is diaphragmatic hernia? We know there is a hole in the diaphragm through which abdominal contents, they reach the mediastinum. Now, obviously, when a child, a neonate is born of diaphragmatic hernia, you have to remember one thing that diaphragmatic hernia is a neonatal surgical emergency for multiple reasons. One, there is always a risk of aspiration and second is because as the gas will keep on increasing in the stomach it will keep on inflating the intestine the intestine is in the mediastinum it will keep on compressing the lug the more the patient goes down and down and down on oxygen the more you try to ventilate the patient one thing that you are not going to do is bag and mask ventilation because bag and mask ventilation will inflate the volume of the stomach the patient is already at a high risk of aspiration as well as in diaphragmatic hernia when there is uh, inflation of the intestine then it compresses the lung which further exacerbates the condition intubation tracheostomy ppv all three are the things that you will actually do in a patient of diaphragmatic hernia without bag mask ventilation so that you can keep ventilating the patient to keep the patient oxygenated because a part of the lung or sometimes even one whole lung is something that is compressed by the uh, intestines that have herniated into the mediastinum. All right. So what you will not do is bag and mask ventilation. All right. So these were the three questions that were asked in anesthesia. Uh, okay. Let's say Sid Thomas, I accept 30 was an option. Still you will mark. Still you will mark 35. Okay. All right. So these are the three very, very easy, straightforward questions that were asked in anesthesia. Is there any doubt? Is this something that you uh, that you want to ask me? If not, then we can then go to uh, the ophthalmology session. I'm going to just wait for a minute. Anyway, I'm always available to you on Telegram as well as uh, Facebook Messenger, whichever is comfortable for you or Instagram. And you can ask me doubts there as well. But straightforward questions in anesthesia, that is what uh, we always get. Right. So uh, you can probably join now the ophthalmology session. They have a lot of exciting things to discuss and I'm always available. All the very best. I hope you guys had a good INI CET. Gear up, analyze these questions properly and prepare, start preparing for NEET. All the very best. Good night.